Hello and welcome back to the land of Seeker. And uh, amazingly enough, it seems as though our beautiful vegetable that we have right before us here has actually advanced in level. I'm really surprised about this because I never thought that was going to happen again. Generally, we're taking so long to gain experience that, you know, at this point in the game, it's a... <laughs> it's it's almost a miracle that we are actually gaining a focus point at this point. Anyway, now what we're going to do is, what do we spec into actually? Because uh, I was taking a look at this beforehand and I thought to myself, okay, well, there's not really much that I want to spec into. I technically could spec into one-handed if I wanted to, or I could spec into smithing. It's more than likely just going to be smithing just so that I can maybe make it to this to get 10 in control or to get a little bit more in vigor or something like that that seems to be the only thing that we can really go for so i guess that's what we're gonna we're gonna plan and try for i i guess i don't know anyway we are otherwise very soon done oh actually i uh, i just want to reset that i didn't realize i had full wait a minute why do i have a full party I I really have a full party? Okay, I didn't realize that. All right, so yes. Anyway, this is going to be the final stand for the, for the Nucanians. They're going to basically be done after this. And uh, I will make sure of that, actually, because what I'm going to do is as soon as we are done in this town, I'm going to force peace with them, and they can't do anything about it. I'm I'm willing to pay them, okay? I'm willing to pay them whatever they ask for, don't tell them I said this. I'm willing to pay them. <laughs> and we're going to see how we uh, how we actually do with that. Now, uh, someone actually mentioned that I'm not using a, a a weapon or a siege weapon or something like that. I don't know. Maybe that was uh, maybe that's in the other series. I'm actually not entirely sure because as far as I am aware, I don't have a specific siege weapon. Um, I don't know. Maybe you uh, maybe you were talking about the siege weapons themselves in the town or something like that. I don't know. Catapults and so on. But Whatever the case, yeah, we do not have a specific weapon that I, I will use in the sieges. Because uh, generally, I am a polearm user, and there's not anything really that much better than what I currently have equipped. So I'm pretty much just going to be using that. And personally, I feel like we've actually been doing pretty well in regards to our control of this polearm. In certain situations, I've felt quite comfortable with it. Although, <laughs> I say in certain situations because let's face it not every situation is going to be ideal for such a lengthy weapon it's just going to make things very very difficult in close quarters situations and it's going to be um kind of difficult to use but who knows maybe maybe i'll be all right maybe i'll be all right i'm actually just going to try and get past here oh uh Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Uh, this is actually not even bad. <laughs> this is actually not, not even bad. This is, uh, this is actually pretty funny. Okay. <laughs> this is novel, isn't it? Uh, this is very... A bit gimmicky. Gotta say. Yeah, a bit gimmicky. But it's all right. Um, unfortunately, the pole arm is pretty bad at killing uh, the gates. So, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to deal with this. Someone is actually attempting to use rocks against me. Not a big fan of that, gotta say. I'm actually going to see if I can maybe do some damage to these fellows so that they don't actually murder me in the process. Oh, wow, there's so many of them as well. This is really, really bad. But thankfully, my forces are now coming in through the gate that I opened, amusingly. <laughs> that is still actually um, making me chuckle a bit here because I'm thinking to myself, wow, okay. That was, uh, I did that on purpose, okay? I did that completely on purpose. Let's just agree that that is exactly what happened. <laughs> Obviously, that's not what happened. Uh, but all anyone needs to know is that that is exactly what happened. You know, if the papers come calling, you know exactly what happened. And you can give them the uh, correct, <laughs> the correct events that transpired, which is indeed me making a strategic choice to jump down there completely by mistake. I mean, uh... <clears throat> completely on purpose and uh, actually making a very cool maneuver out of it which um, was not bad I gotta say not bad oh wow uh, Nicanian Huskars take a beating don't they look at that they uh, that, that particular fellow was really just taking hits like candy 
really not uh, not bothered at all about the damage I was dealing there, but thankfully he did succumb to the damage after the third hit. And I think we're pretty much done. Yeah, I think we're pretty much done here. Yeah, I can just speed things up. And that is all she wrote for the Nicanians. And then the Nicanians are obviously going to be done. So that now turns our attention to the next faction that we want to fight against. Now the question is, which one is that going to be? I mean, there are a, a few choices. And of course, we are currently at war against the Prowan. Which is a bit of an issue. That is a bit of an issue. Because uh, I, I kind of... I, I don't know. I kind of want to... Uh, I don't know. On the one hand, I really want to go and attack them. And I want to I wanna teach them a, a lesson or two. Because obviously they've been a pretty annoying adversary for us at the moment. They're consistently you know, trying to bear down on us quite hard, and I'm not a big fan of that. So I'm thinking maybe we'll try and teach them a lesson, possibly. Or maybe, <laughs> in me attempting to teach them a lesson, we actually get ourselves completely murdered. That might also happen, too. So that's a bit of an issue. Bit of an issue. So I'm not sure how that's really going to go, but whatever the case, I'm going to be just slapping a bunch of money in there, and, uh, oh yeah, I uh, do need to go and sell a little bit, I suppose. Just a little bit of stuff. Oh, that was a bit too much. Let me just reset that real fast. There we go. And, oh, okay. Uh, well, sure. Okay, fine. We will just do that. And um, should I buy something? <gasps> oh, hello there. Okay, this might actually be something for us. This is a new halberd, like an actual unique halberd for this mod i'm actually looking forward to this Ooh, or i could get the war razor but it's got really slow swing speed i'm thinking we're going to go for this this is seventy-six thousand, which is actually fine because bear in mind i of course have a lot of loot that i can trade for well anything basically um yeah you can quite clearly see that. Okay, so yeah, there we go. Now I'm actually going to be equipping this. This is going to be really, really fun for us. Or at least I hope it's going to be really fun. This is going to be an amazing... I don't even know what it looks like. It's so it, it's so massive on my back right there. I can't even see, I can't even see the top of it. But whatever the case, um, we're just going to lock that. Just going to lock it. And yeah, there we go. All right. So yeah, now that we have the ability to make peace with the Nicanians, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to pay 710 with them. That's perfectly fine. I have no issue with that. As I said before, making peace with a faction like the Nicanians, it is just a, uh, it's pure strategy just to do that right now because there is no reason for me to continue fighting them. A absolutely no reason. They have nothing that we want and they, well, they want everything we have. So, <laughs> you know, that, that's kind of how it goes. Anyway. Now that we've made peace with them, I can pretty much just run around wherever I want, and the Prowan are obviously going to be a bit of a thorn in our side. So now I'm wondering what we want to do about them. Uh, well, them. Them? <laughs> no idea. No idea what happened there. Anyway, that is that is going to be something that we would want to do. The Prowan are obviously extremely irritating. 6,200 tribute we'd have to pay per day if we wanted to actually do that. The Rablam are obviously kind of irritating as well. The Waltus, we're paying them 4,200. We're paying the Rablam 6,500. And we are also paying, well, obviously we're, we're paying the, Nic the Nicanians, but they're going to be... Um, well, hopefully they're going to be eliminated quite soon. Now, the one thing that I'm thinking we might want to go for is to attack the Lamoka. Just purely for the fact that they are behind us, if you know what I mean. So, for example, if we had our front lines facing towards the Prowan and the Walters and the, uh, and the Rablam, then the, the Mocha are going to be on the opposite side, which is going to make things a little bit uncomfortable for us if they decide to declare war on us at that exact moment. So that could be a bit of a problem. But apart from that, what else do we want to do? Because here's the Rablam. They actually don't even have a huge amount of fiefs. They only have, uh, what is it now? 
uh, one, two, three, four, uh, six, uh, six towns. Yeah, six towns. And they also have how many castles? Three? Four? Yeah, four. Four castles. Are you serious? They only have four castles. That's actually super weird. I'm just going to check this real quick. No, 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 no. They have six castles. Okay, I must be missing two of them. I don't know where they don't know where they are, but we actually have 20 towns and 22 castles, if you can believe it. That's kind of, that's kind of impressive, I've got to say. I feel like that's kind of impressive, at least. And when the Nicanians inevitably get eliminated, they are, of course, also going to maybe join us. Some of them might actually decide to join us because I have been uh, rather lenient with them or something like that. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, there we go. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, now now it's a case of, shall we decide who we attack? I mean, I could attack the Walters. They're right here. It kind of maybe makes sense, but I, I... You know what? Okay. What we're going to do is I'm going to very quickly just check on the front line of the Walters. We're going to go over there. Going to see what kind of units they have in their front line garrisons. And we're going to see if that actually um, makes sense. Because I don't really want to go into a war with a bunch of enemy garrisons that have exceptional strength defensively. That is just not something that I'm going to want to do right now. I would much prefer to focus on someone that um, is going to be a little little easier. Just a, just a little. Not, not, not a massive amount, but just a little. Because... If we do, if we do actually go to war against these fellows, it's uh, oh wow, they're they're actually pretty weak. What's actually going on here? Hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm skeptical about this. I'm a bit suspicious. Um, I'm gonna make peace with the Prowan. Five thousand. I'm gonna make peace with them because they've actually just started to besiege something of ours, and I'm not a big fan of them actually taking that. So we're just gonna make peace with them right now, and um. Were they? No, they weren't besieging one of ours. Oh, okay, well, never mind. I'm getting mixed up with all these names over here because we've obviously captured them in the past and now I thought that they were actually part of our faction. Oh, well, never mind, never mind. Okay, the best thing that we can do, however, is just focus on the Walters, I suppose. That's, exa that's exactly it. So, how do we get up here? This is interesting. They're on a mountain. Ooh, okay, that might be... Hmm. Should I do something very audacious? Okay, there we go. Yes, look at this. Look at this. They're all joining us. They are all joining us. Okay, now that's actually very impressive. I like it. Some of them are... Yeah, oh, no, no, no. That's just a... That's just a mercenary clan. Okay. We don't really need to worry about that. But Nicania is done. There you go. They are completely out of the game. And now we no longer have to worry about them. So the best thing I can do now, and this is this is the reason why I'm going over here, is I'm actually going to try and attack from the very center of the Waltos here. Whoa. Yeah. See, now that's exactly the reason why I actually wanted to start off here. Because as I said in one of the previous episodes, it's really good to consider how you're going to attack and what kind of, what shall we say, what? How did I get 68,000? Oh yeah, that happened before. I remember that. Yeah, I'm not sure if you remember that in this series. There was uh, a time where I was really, really hurting for money. And then, uh, actually, it might, have not, it might not have been this one. It might have been the, the war, uh, not the war sword, the war, Warhammer, um, the old realms. That's it. The Old Realms mod, that might have actually had that happen there. But whatever the case, it was a companion that was in our clan and they won a tournament. And I think I gained over 300,000 dinars from that for some unknown reason. I really have no idea what's going on with that. But yeah, anyway, um, as I was saying, the best thing that we can do is utilize the strength that our army currently has, try and eliminate and indeed take something that is very, very strong, in other words, this particular thief right next to us right here, and then radiate outwards. Radiate outwards and then see what happens. So I'm gonna try. 
And we're going to... Wow, look at this. There's only four factions left. That's actually kind of incredible. All right. So no other faction has any support of war. And the Walters are the second most powerful faction in the game. All right. This is going to be interesting. Let's do this. Boom. All right. Everyone's saying no to this, by the way, as you can quite clearly tell. Everyone's saying no to this, but I am very much wanting to get into a battle here. I want to I wanna see what the Walters are all about. We've only very briefly fought against them in the past, so it would probably be a nice idea for us to get a bit of a... Mm, well, not, not so much a preview, but a um, bit of an idea as to what they're all about. All right, let's do this. Um, okay, so <laughs> this is this is the one issue with having so many archers. Maybe I should change them again. Should I change my custom units back to back to horse archers or um, or turn them into something else? Anyway, this is my new pole arm. <laughs> it's massive. How am I supposed to? Oh my. Oh, okay. Oh wow, this is. Okay, this is. 821 damage. Okay. Um, I like this weapon. As you can quite clearly tell. And I can literally attack from so far away that these enemies can't even hit me. That is amazing. Yeah, I thought to myself, is this actually going to be unwieldy? Because, of course, if you think about it, it's so incredibly long, it's very, very difficult to actually use this in a practical situation possibly um but no no it is actually not unwieldy and feels pretty good it's uh it's got a good amount of speed the handling is decent it's uh, actually better than my previous pole arm in every single way apart from speed by a small margin so i am actually pretty happy with this now the only problem i'm gonna foresee with this weapon is that it's going to be very difficult to use in a siege. Yeah, not in a siege defense, mind you. But in close quarters combat, this is going to be... Well... Kind of funny. I'm going to assume. I'm going to assume it's going to be kind of funny, at least. Because we're going to get into, you know, like a indoor area or something like that. 42! What? 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 42 Dark Wave Knights. Why does this guy have 42 Dark Wave Knights? I had no idea that he had that many. Alright. Mm hmm. Well. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to create a party. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, who do I want to who do I want to be the party member? Uh, 200, 231. Yeah, probably this guy, Artie Mendros. Artie Mendros. There we go. And we're just going to give him a bunch of deserters just to fill out his army with some rabble, I guess. And then apart from that, we need to give him something else. So I'm going to give him some White Frost Templar warriors. Not a big fan of those personally. And otherwise, I will just be giving him a bunch of Dark Wave knights. I know I probably shouldn't do this too much, but I'm going to give him, should I give him 50? Should I give him more than that? I don't really want to give him more than that, to be honest. So I'm going to give him 50. I do not trust the AI for the parties as far as I can throw them. So not at all. And um, <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a little bit problematic if they decide to do some weird stuff. Anyway, I'm going to actually go for defensive here for them. And... Is he actually going to try and attack? Can you can you run? Why is he holding? Okay, now he's running away. Okay, good. I'm just very glad that I gave him a whole bunch of cavalry because it now means that he's going to be super fast and hopefully he will not get himself um, captured or taken prisoner or anything like that. He seems to actually be going after some people, which is good. And as I said, he has great scouting skill. He has great tactics, which is going to enable him to actually be really good in auto resolves as well. That's the that's actually a really cool uh, cool difference from um, the two games, from from Warband to Bannerlord, because in Warband tactics is all about providing you with a battle advantage, a battle advantage, i.e., you know, giving you additional units in uh, in in manual battles. So going in 
and having more units than your opponent. That's basically what that does. But in this, tactics is all about your effectiveness with auto resolves and things like that. So it's actually pretty cool how that has changed so fundamentally, basically, because now, now tactics is actually pretty important for your vassals to have because if they don't have t any, any tactics they're just going to have well i mean they're not going to have difficulties winning auto resolves dependent on their unit composition of course but it is going to be a lot easier a lot easier for them to be successful in that regard anyway um i'm i'm actually a bit worried about getting shot to death so i'm actually going to see if i can maybe oh this is bad Okay, oh wow. Um, are the Walters actually good with their archers? Because I, I don't actually know what they're good at. Which is a bit of a problem, isn't it? Yeah, I probably should... What? <laughs> There's some really funny stuff going on here. These guys are literally just throwing themselves out of the battlements or something like that. I have no idea what is even happening there. But yeah, I'm pretty happy that um, my forces seem to be doing a pretty good job of penetrating their defenses. At least for now. And... Oh, hello there. Okay, uh, wow, this is a lot of people. Uh, this is a lot of people. Uh, yeah, as you can see, my pole arm is a little bit unwieldy, as you might expect. But it does massive damage. Look at how much damage it was able to do right there. If I actually hit someone properly with a good amount of, um, good amount of, uh, space of the, uh, of the pole arm, you know, like the head of the pole arm, if it actually hits... It does massive damage. And if I can actually... <laughs> the size of the thing. The length is insane. You can literally hit someone from across the map with this thing. I mean, not literally, obviously, but... That is... Um, that is pretty... <laughs> that is fun. That is a lot of fun. Gotta say that. Highly recommend it if you're playing the Land of Seeker. Get, get yourself one of these pole arms. It's a lot of fun. To, uh, <laughs> to, I mean, literally, just look at it on my on my back. It is so incredibly unrealistic to literally think that I'm running around with this thing, right? Surely, it's gonna, it's definitely gonna be like a cavalry thing more than a more than infantry thing, wouldn't you say? I don't know, but um, whatever the case, it's uh, it's very enjoyable to use, which is pretty much the only thing I look at when. Uh, when considering using a weapon or not, you know, is it fun? Is it fun to use? Then, then yes, then I'll definitely go for it. Okay, so it seems like most of the enemy are basically done. I'm not entirely sure what's even happening with the enemy right now. They seem to just be spawning in in very small numbers and um, getting themselves killed over and over again. Bit weird, gotta say. But there you go, we were able to win. Uh, Obscure Soul Judge Knight. I am probably not going to be making any Obscure Soul Judge Knights um, vassals, mostly because, or shall we say companions, mostly because they don't have any riding skill. I mean, I could give them riding skill, but then I have to give them a mount, and they don't have a mount by default, and so I'm not really wanting to do that, and I also cannot provide them any fiefs because it crashes the game due to their culture, but... Whatever the case, we have now taken this town, which I am very pleased about. 29 Dark Wave Knights? Okay, hello there. Uh, okay, that, that, is, um, that is actually pretty funny. Alright. Uh, okay, I, I don't know what to do now. Because that guy is pretty far away from us right now, I assume. And, wait a minute, let me actually just take a quick look. Is he actually far away? Um, I think he, no, no, is that, yeah, yeah, no, never mind, never mind, he is actually really far away, okay, you know what, I'm gonna make another party, um, <laughs> uh, this is not a good idea, but I'm gonna do it nevertheless, okay, let's have a look, oh, this guy, whoa, he's got 300, look at that, that's incredible, whoa, yeah, this guy, no, but this guy is actually not even with us, he's really far away, so that's not really gonna work, um, uh, this one? Yeah, he's with us. Okay, fantastic. All right, so I'm basically just going to be giving him a bunch of Dark Wave Knights, and then I'll just send him on his way. I'm going to give him 60, uh, which is actually 
that's all I have. <laughs> that is all I have. So let's hope that this actually gives him a really, really good um, head start, pretty much. And we're just going to go for defensive, defensive, and there we have it. Okay, so this town is now completely fine. Uh, well, I mean, technically it's not defended at all, but it's it's okay. You know, it's not a not a terribly big deal. And uh, yeah, we are now at war against the Walters. So let's see where we can go next. Okay, so we have a castle right by the side of us here. It has 400 units inside it, but it feels to me like the Walters are not particularly difficult for us to uh, for us to deal with right now. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, this fellow, yeah, we're just going to give it to him. He's a new vassal. Hopefully, he's not going to be leaving because he was one of the uh, he was one of the people that actually joined us after uh, uh, you know after the the Nicanians dissolved. So very much hoping that he's going to be a relatively decent, uh, relatively decent individual, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, otherwise, apart from that, we're going to try and take a Lanark Hen Castle. And then we're going to have a look-see at what the current status of the realm is. Because, of course, we really do want to take things as fast and as efficiently as possible. I mean, we took that town with relative ease, but that doesn't mean that everything is going to be easy. Because... As you can no doubt tell, there were a lot of militia. And that's one of the big things in Bannerlord. Very, very different from how it is in Warband. Because in Warband, you are dealing with... Wow, this is a pretty cool castle. Anyway, in Warband, you're dealing with pretty much just pure garrison. That's it. Just pure garrison. Whatever units have been put in there by the vassals, that's what you're going to be fighting. Whereas in Bannerlord, you have kind of both. You have both to deal with. You have militia, and you also have the garrison. And now, the main problem that I've seen so far with the militia system is the fact that every single time you see a you see a thief and it has just militia, you automatically kind of have a victory on your hands if you are you know currently fielding good units. You know, and I'm not talking about you know tier ones or anything like that. I'm just talking about. If you have four, five, six tier of unit, you're probably going to be pretty good. You can probably, you know, assume that you're going to be fine when it comes to um, taking a thief. And there's only militia there, of course, because if there's um, if there's a garrison there, then you then you might need to worry. You might need to worry a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to try and do some damage with my <laughs> ah yes, with my pole arm. This is a lot of fun. Really is. Like, literally, if you can see exactly what's going on here, I am so far out of their reach, it is not even funny. And I'm able to s destroy their shields in the meantime as well. This is so incredibly funny. All right, there we go. We were able to actually get inside, and now I can shoot these guys with reckless abandon. Thank you, thank you. Oh wow, my forces are already on the battlements. I mean, this is exactly the reason why I didn't give that fellow Obscure Soul Judge Knights, by the way, because obviously, Obscure Soul Judge Knights, they are just prime real estate, if you if you want to call them that. But it, yes, anyway, they are really good at sieges, just purely for the fact that they can go straight on in. They have shock value. They can just go boom, 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 two-handed sword to the face, and they can most likely kill someone in one hit, or at least two hits. And that is going to thin out the opponent so incredibly easily, especially when there are, I don't know, five or ten of them doing that at the same time. It is immense, the amount of clearing power that these uh, Judge Knights can have. So, yeah. That's the reason why I didn't give those to, uh, to any, of our, um, any of our new party members. Because I just want them, you know, I want them for myself. Thank you. Alright, so let's actually see what's going on in Lanoken, uh, because let's see if they actually have... Oh, no, they don't. They don't this time. Okay, that's, that's kind of, you know, I'm going to say I'm, I'm kind of disappointed. I was hoping for, you know, 10,000 Dark Wave Knights to be in the garrison here. I mean, obviously, that's not going to ever happen, but, you know. Someone can dream, can they not? Uh, yes, indeed. Okay, so let's just place another... 20,000 in there and all of the improvements are not yet done which is absolutely fine don't really care about that too much and now we can just wait here for some time now the main problem that I'm going to face is the fact that I don't really have the ability 
to garrison these fiefs. I'm going to have to kind of secure the area, as it were, before we can really um, leave the area, which is a bit of a problem, because otherwise it's just going to get taken back super, super easily, and that is obviously something that we don't want to have happen. Now, unfortunately for the Walters, I have now captured, or shall we say, caught one of their stronger armies out in the middle of nowhere. And they really did not want to do this. This is a huge error on their part because them, then them actually doing this is pretty much just going to sign their death warrant. I mean, you can see exactly why that is because they have just spawned over the way there. That is hilarious. Look at how close they are. Okay, yep, they are. I'm gonna call it now. They're already done. They are already done. There is nothing they can do about this, and. Um, I mean, I don't blame them, to be honest. I don't blame them for getting uh, getting caught by us because we are moving pretty fast on the world map at the moment, thanks to all of our cavalry and things. Obviously, we are moving a bit slower now that we have um, the Dark Wave Knights no longer with us. But still, uh, yeah, these, these fellows are literally just going to fall before us relatively fast. I might decide to do, uh, actually charge some of my forces here. Yeah, I'm going to charge my infantry and my cavalry just to protect some of our archers. Really don't want them to get killed, of course. Oh, this polearm. This polearm is so fun. It's actually... I don't know. I, I think, you know... I, I Okay, okay. I'm going to say... Even in a close quarter situation, I haven't found it too bad to use. Which is really surprising because you'd think such a well a long reach would be really detrimental to something like that but maybe i just haven't had the right opportunity to uh, fail at using it <laughs> that might very well be the case uh, there's a lot of enemies spawning in here as well let me see if i can thin them out a little bit and just to, you know just distract them and um i, I think i was talking about this in the warband episode uh, recently but Positive influence. I think I talked about this as well in the previous episode of this one, but positive influence on the battlefield really makes a huge difference. And again, it doesn't matter whether I actually get kills or anything like that. All I need to do is just run into them, daze them a little bit, maybe do some damage here and there, and that's going to be enough, because my forces otherwise are just going to be able to steamroll most things. I'm actually wondering what is actually going to happen when we go up against the Prowan. For example, because I feel like the Prowan might actually give us a run for our money. I, I don't know whether they will, though, because, I mean, you can see here. I'm playing on maximum difficulty, by the way. You know that. I'm playing on maximum difficulty, and every single unit is taking full damage. The, uh, the combat AI, the campaign AI, whatever you want to call it, all of those things are all on maximum. So you may think, oh, you know, why are you winning so easily? Well... The reason for that is uh, pretty clear. I mean, I'm running around with some of the most powerful units in the entire game. And I'm talking about not even just the Dark Wave Knights that I just rescued, but the, as I say, the Obscure Soul Judge Knights are amazing. Look at them. They have 275 in two-handed weapon proficiency. And we also have Blood Lotus Revenge Knights. They have 260 in one-handed. And the Dark Wave Knights, of course, they have 275 in one-handed. So all of these units combined, notwithstanding my custom units, unfortunately I can't access their stats at the moment, but you know for certain that they have 210. They have 210 uh, in their, uh, you know, in their relevant skills. And that's the reason, that is the reason why we are able to win these battles so incredibly easily because the enemy just doesn't have anything that is going to be able to uh, defeat us and of obviously i mean here's the thing even if they had something that would be able to potentially defeat us i then might not want to do that you know i might not want to go into a battle against someone that could potentially win however i think i'm gonna start throwing a bit more caution to the wind in other words, I'm going to actually start going into battles against much larger opponents. And I'm talking about things like thousand strong armies on the fields of battle. Usually I would only do that in, uh, in like a siege defense or something like that. But I'm actually going to take the risk, I think. 
going forward, I will take the risk just so that we can see and push ourselves as far as we can possibly go. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.